A pulley with unknown rotational inertia is hanging from the ceiling at a fixed position. On one side, a mass of M is attached to the pulley with the string located at distance 2R. Let's annotate that on here. This is the distance 2R. And on the other side, a mass of 1.5M is attached to the pulley with a string a distance of little r. Assume that the rotational inertia of the block with mass m is 4mg r squared. And the rotational inertia of the 1.5m is 1.5mg r squared. Okay. If the entire block pulley system rotates an angular acceleration of alpha, so it's rotating at alpha, determine the rotational inertia of the pulley. So here I want to look at the system. You could do, I would do a free body diagram of the entire system. If you wanted to do the individual blocks and the tension, you could, but um, it's probably easier to think of it as an entire system here. So here I have a force of gravity, mg, and here I have a force of gravity, 1.5 mgr, right? Gravity acts at the center. There's gravity acting on this block, gravity acting on this block. What else is holding this up, right? Because not accelerating downward, so there has to be an upward force that's keeping it up. And so that's the tension in this rope here. It's being suspended. Okay, um, so now let's look at the, those are all, that's everything touching the blocks and the pulleys. The ropes are part of the system here, blocks and the ropes um, and the pulley. So that tension is internal to that system. They're all like just pulling on each other, but it's an internal force. So now we wanna look at looking at the net torque equals I alpha. And for the net torque, you wanna look at the, the Remember, you always think about the R vector, where the force is being applied, and then the force that's perpendicular to that R vector. Now, technically for this guy, oops, erased too much there. Technically, if I were to draw an R vector for this guy from the axes of rotation there to this point, technically, um, that's the R vector, right? And the force is this way. But I only care about the portion of the R vector that's perpendicular to this. Right, so I only care about the like. Remember, when you do R and F, when you're doing torque, you only care about either the force that's perpendicular to R or the R that's perpendicular to F. So the component of R that's perp perpendicular to the force vector, force vector is down. The the portion of the R vector that's perpendicular is pointing to the left. So that's two R times mg, the force. So this is the R, the component of the R vector that's perpendicular to mg. And now let's say the, we'll say uh, counterclockwise is the positive direction and clockwise is the negative direction. So this is a positive torque because this force would cause the whole system to rotate counterclockwise. And then similarly for this guy, we draw for the, the, the 1.5 MGR, if I were to draw my R vector to there, I only care about the portion that's perpendicular to the 1.5 MGR. And this would be a clockwise rotation. So I would say it's minus, um, R times 1.5 mg. Now the tension acts at the axis of rotation, right? It's helping hold it up. So it doesn't exert a torque on the system. And so that equals I alpha. Specifically, the R vector is zero for that tension guy. So uh, equals I alpha. Now let's think about the I part. The I has to be the sum of the rotational inertia of everything in the system. So that is the pulley and the two blocks. So this I is really composed of three components, the I of the pulley plus the I of each block, which they told you was 4 mg r squared and then 1.5 mg r squared. And then um, that is I pulley plus uh, 5.5 mg r squared. So then we say that this is equal to I pulley, I'm just gonna call it IP for short, 5.5 mg r squared times alpha. Okay, this is 2 r mg, this is 1.5 r mg, this is at 0 0.5 mg r is equal to this, I pulley plus 5.5 mg r squared times alpha. And if you want to solve for I, can divide by alpha and then subtract the 5.5 mg r squared and that would give me the eye of the pulley. Okay. Now if the blocks are replaced with the applied forces of mg and 1.5 mg, what would be the new angular acceleration of the system? Uh, or what would the new angular acceleration of the system be? Now, now the system is less, there's no more blocks. So what has changed about it is the forces are all kind of the same. 
we have mg and 1.5 mg. So in terms of the free body diagram, nothing has changed, right? So when I do my net torque, the net torque is still 0 0.5 mgr. What about the I alpha part? Well, I is just now the pulley because I've removed the blocks. So th there's no I of the blocks anymore. So this is just I pulley times alpha. So the alpha is equal to 0 0.5 mgr divided by the I of the pulley. But we found that the I, so let, let's say that, let's call this I nu, alpha nu, sorry. But we found the I pulley from before. So we could say it's 0 0.5 mgr divided by 0 0.5 mgr over alpha minus 5.5 mgr squared. Okay, so that's the new acceleration. Just leave it like that. It's not a. So I know it's kind of weird to say that it has an alpha, but the alpha of this system, even though it's the same forces uh, acting on the system, you think you feel like that way. Um, it's actually a different acceleration, and and that has to do with the fact that. Um, this guy, even though there's an mg acting on this guy, the actual force on the, the rope is not equal to mg, right? Because if this tension force were equal to mg, then um, the block wouldn't move, right? The block would have an acceleration of zero. But the, the block is clearly going to accelerate downward, okay? Which means that the tension has to be smaller than mg, which is why this guy has a different acceleration than this guy. This Which one's accelerating more is that... Um, this one actually will accelerate, um, uh, this will have a higher acceleration than that guy, I think. Um, yeah, I guess it would kind of depend on a lot of things, but yeah. Uh, I hope that made sense.